I think the thing that I think everybody said in their own ways is that this process at the end of a movie is in a way the most the most directive, the most mystifying process because unless you're a musician, you're trying to sort of convey something across a sort of gulf, a lack of knowledge, a gulf of lack of knowledge. And the possibilities of the film getting better are huge. And the possibilities of not being able to convey your ideas and not get what you want is huge because you're not speaking the same language. No, I mean, one of the wonderful things about working with Matthew was, as I think most composers in the room can attest to, um, it's very rare that you find a director who you want in the room with you while you're actually writing, performing, and creating the score. And um, I found only two or three guys that I've done that with. Um, one was forced, this was not. And Matthew literally sat behind me. It was a lot of music and very little time. So Matthew literally sat behind me on the couch of my studio while I, while I wrote and performed. And it's, it's uh, humbling, but it's also really, he, he's the perfect kind of director who just understands where his limitations are in the process in terms of speaking about music, which is so great. He speaks about it in emotional terms, which is, to me, the sign of a great director. They never come and say, take the guitar out, take the cello out. They come and say, I need to feel more fear here, or I need to feel uh, sadness for this character. And Matthew is really great about communicating that. Yeah, and I, I should say, the, you know, as a director, I think the key is always to be honest. And I can't sing the first bar of God Save the Queen in June. Not that I want to, because I can't stand it. But, uh, so if you pretend you know something you don't, you're always in trouble as a director, I think. And if you can be honest, then you have a good shot.